which was a good time for Environment Minister Tanya Plibersek to sneak out the government's latest attack on business. Now, look, that might be a little unfair. Plibersek, I'm sure, had planned today's delayed announcement before last night's attack, but it's a nature-positive plan that she'd been promising for years, delay, 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 but it's been attacked by so many business groups that Plibersek has cut it right back for now. Today, she announced yet another green bureaucracy armed with massive fines against companies that damage the environment. For extremely serious intentional breaches of federal environment law, the courts would be able to impose fines of as high as $780 million or send people to prison for seven years. Wow. There's also supposedly be, going to be faster approvals for developments that's meant to please business, but she's promising more of a nature positive plans later. Joining me each Tuesday is Nationals front benchler Matt Canavan, the former resources minister. Matt Canavan, your response to this nature positive plan? Nature positive plan, uh, Andrew. It's a jobs negative plan. Uh, that's what this is. This is going to deter investment in our country. It's putting up more red tape, in this case green tape, on those people who want to create jobs and build and develop our nation. Uh, of course, we need to have uh, stringent laws to protect our environment. We already have uh, such laws and have had them for decades. It's very, very difficult to get a major project going in this country. And there should be hurdles to do that, to prove that you're not going to have a significant impact on, on, on major items of national environmental significance. That should be there. But what this proposal does is take out of the hands the power and responsibility to administer those laws from the officials, from the parliamentarians you elect that are, and that are accountable to you and puts them into the hands of unelected Canberra bureaucrats. So uh, this, this nature positive plan is only going to be a jobs positive plan for one part of the country and that's for the Canberra bureaucracy. And I don't think the way forward for our country is to give more and more power uh, to Canberra. That's why uh, people like the WA Premier have been critical of the government's plans here. He is very concerned that this bill will mean more power for Canberra and take away uh, the decision-making responsibilities, the control uh, that Australians have over their natural environment. I mean, I, I see it firsthand. I, I live uh, on the Great Barrier Reef, just kilometres from the Great Barrier Reef, and we're sick and tired of people that don't live there who have no idea about the reef telling us what its state is, uh, what we should do about it, and how evil we are for wanting to have a functioning economy uh, to, and live next to these beautiful natural assets. We want to protect those natural assets. We just need to have the power and responsibility to do so. Well, your point about the bureaucracy, here's a new one, as if we don't have enough already, is quite well made because, honestly, um, every big decision... I mean, they're talking fines of 700 million plus. Uh, every big decision of a development of a mine or a dam or whatever does involve some damage to the environment, a change to the environment. And these are political decisions, essentially. Is the damage or change you make worth the gain in some other way? Uh, that is a political decision, not a bureaucratic one. This, I think, has a chilling effect, again, like so much the government has done, on mm -hmm. development. And don't forget renewable energy. That has an impact too, right? That has a big, big oh, impact. In yes. fact, under the government's net zero plans, they want, they want to blanket our country uh, the size of half the size of Victoria in solar and wind turbines. And the issue here is, what do you think is going to happen when the, the, this Canberra environmental czar that will be appointed by a Labor government gets an application uh, to destroy tens of thousands of hectares of koala habitat to build a wind farm and another application to build less, usually about a tenth of the size less, to build a coal-fired power station or a coal mine. Uh, what are they going to do? <laughs> How are they going to judge between those two items? We all know where that Canberra bureaucracy will fall on, what side of the ledger they'll fall on. And as I say, that takes power, responsibility and accountability away from you, the people, and enshrines it in unelected officials that, you, that, do, that don't have to account themselves to you. And so this will be, a, just will put a chilling effect on investment in our country. It's not what we read, um, need right now. I think you're right. The government has chosen a busy news week to drop this out. Uh, this was always a dirty deal they did with the Greens before the last election. They actually put out the proposal for this nature positive plan, so-called nature positive plan, on election eve. They put it out on election eve. The night before the election, they put out a media release saying they're going to do this because it was a deal clearly they had done with the Greens for their preferences and they're trying to hide these plans from you again.